Welcome everyone to Pitt Street Uniting Church on this Good Friday morning. The service this morning is based on the Stations of the Cross, a devotion that was developed in the Middle Ages by the Franciscans as a way of allowing people who could not travel to the Holy Land to walk where Jesus walked on the day of his Passion. By the end of the 17th century, many churches had stations or stops ranged at intervals along their walls, each with a cross, and under that cross, a representation of an event in the Passion narrative. Nine of the 14 stations are taken directly from the Bible, and the other, f other five come out of the earliest traditions of the church. With the exception of the first and last hymns, we will remain seated during the service. Each station will have a Bible reading from one of the Gospels or from a passage from the prophet Isaiah, which Christians have associated with the death of Jesus. And the reading will then be followed by brief words of meditation, a response of prayer, and singing which links the stations to our stories today. This morning's stations are very unusual. They were painted nearly 30 years ago by Robert Gauldy, an artist from Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. At the time, there was massive road construction on the streets of Wellington. Inner-city neighbourhoods were ruined for a motorway. Before the advent of high-vis plastic, oil drums were used as barricades. Large construction machines dotted the urban landscape as they now dominate Sydney's landscape of West Connex. For Goldie, the abstraction of the characters of the Passion as oil drums and brutal machines is an invitation to look again at the story we think we know so well, to move beyond domesticated piety to a deeper engagement. Through telling again this familiar story in unfamiliar words, in words and in music, we recognize the nature of power and Jesus' invocation of the powers of the weak. The events of that Friday were a drama of power. Today we will not exchange the earthly struggle for a transcendent or otherworldly transaction. This story tells of real people struggling with real power. Good Friday is the ultimate day in which the church asks with unflinching honesty about the moral quality of reality? Or is it just that money talks and might makes right? Jesus becomes for us the lens through which we reread power, social relations, and official policies. Jesus stands alongside all the powerless in confronting prayer demanding justice on earth from God. His non-violent resistance exposes and threatens every other kind of power. No wonder he made the political rulers nervous and the crowd frantic. They came to kill him, but he kept on praying his dangerous, abrasive, honest prayer. And the prayer that he prays insists that God will not be mocked. He prays from the Psalms, for God hears the poor and does not despise the ones who are captives. So may we too, on this Good Friday, risk employing the powers of the weak. Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus was taken in chains to Pilate. The chief priests were accusing Jesus of many things. So Pilate questioned him. Aren't you going to answer, he said? Listen to all their accusations. Jesus refused to say a word 
and Pilate was amazed. Pilate spoke to the crowd, What do you want me to do with this one you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! But what crime has he committed? Pilate asked. They shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Pilate wanted to pre please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free for them. Then he had Jesus whipped and handed him over to be crucified. Pilate asked what crime Jesus had committed. It was a good question. Jesus had annoyed the religious leaders, of that there was no doubt. He had been critical of social and religious structures. He had healed the villages. He had told stories to the crowds. He was a threat to public law and order. But was that enough to condemn him, to end his life? But he would not defend himself. The storyteller was silent now, and the crowd was noisy, and Pilate handed him over to be crucified. For all who face charges because of their beliefs, their politics, their sexualities, for their courage and for compassion, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus takes up the cross. The soldiers took Jesus inside to the courtyard of the governor's palace and called together the rest of the company. They put a purple robe on Jesus, made a crown of thorn branches and put it on his head. They began to salute him, long live the ruler of the Jews. They beat him over the head with a stick, spat on him, fell on their knees and bowed to him. When they had finished mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Soldiers, taking the chance for a bit of fun. They had a heavy day ahead. Soon they would have to put on their public face, disciplined, controlled, efficient. But now for a bit of a lark with the lads, with no risk of recrimination. Dead men and raped women tell no stories. And Jesus was going to his death. For all who are overwhelmed by fear and anguish of heart and our brothers and sisters bearing heavy burdens that we may be in solidarity with them, God in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Jesus falls for the first time. Who would have believed what we now tell who could have seen God's hand in this? Jesus was exhausted. He was in pain. He was going to his death. The cross was heavy and he fell. He was flesh and blood like us. He was struggling. For people who are defending human rights against dictators, destructive multinational corporations, religious extremists and oppressive regimes, people facing defamation, persecution, intimidation and violence, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus meets his mother. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. 
So they took the child Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to God. At the time there was a man named Simeon living in Jer Jerusalem. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. She was going to be there at his end. She who had been there with God at his beginning. She was his mother. She had fed him and cradled him and watched over his growing. Whatever he had said or done, he was still her son and she would not desert him now. Whatever pain of his she could embrace, she would. And in the meeting of their eyes, there was love, suffering and shining. For all who have lost a child through death, distance or differences, and for all who watch over a loved one in pain, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. On their way through Jerusalem, they met a man named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. S Simon from Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, what a tale you have to tell your children. You helped Jesus. You gave him strength on the streets of Jerusalem. Willing or unwilling, you, Simon, have become part of his story. And he part of yours. For you helped him when he needed you. Would we be able to be Simon? For those of us who carry the cross of another, for all who carry a cross of our own, help us to risk getting involved when we would rather walk away. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. Whenever you did this, you did it for me. Wiping faces, dirty faces, faces full of sweat and tears, faces covered in chocolate and jam. Wiping faces is something we try to do gently and lovingly, something that soothes and cleanses something that brings healing. Wiping faces is something we do for those who are young or old or in pain or in trouble, wanting them to know that they are cherished and loved. And when we wipe the faces of God's little ones, we are wiping the face of God. For all who are walking in the shadows, ignored or forgotten by society, may they know divine presence 
through human acts of compassion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus falls for the second time. Ill-treated and afflicted, he never said a word. Like a lamb to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep silent before its shearers, he never opened his mouth. I am finding it hard to watch you, Jesus, to see you struggling, to see you on the ground. Into your silence, I want to shout. Why do they keep hurting you? What have you done wrong? Why don't you save yourself? Why don't we save you? For the people of West Papua who suffer under oppression, and for all who struggle and fall and have no one to help them to their feet, may our hands reach out to bear them up and may they find the strength to rise and carry on. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. A large crowd of people followed Jesus. Among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but for yourselves and your children. Weep for the mothers and children of Jerusalem. Weep for the men of Jerusalem, for Israeli and Palestinian for Jew and Muslim and Christian, for the strangers in their midst. Pray for the peace of the Holy Land. Pray that people may live together in justice. Pray that all people may live together in peace. For transformation of relations between women and men, between races and cultures, between privilege and need, for people who live in places of conflict and danger, for peacemakers and peacekeepers in every land, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus falls for the third time. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground he had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by others a man of suffering and acquainted with grief and as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised. And we held him of no account. I am not sure if I can watch this much longer. In his pain, I see my pain. In his falling, I see my falling. In his cross, in his cross I am included. He carried it for our shared humanity, for me, for my friends, and for my enemies. For all who come to that point of suffering where they are weak and exhausted and there seems to be no hope, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is stripped of his clothes. 
they took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called myrrh, but Jesus would not drink it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get each piece of clothing. Stripped now of clothing, of disciples, of friends, alone, naked and vulnerable, with nothing to protect you from the pain to come. For the ones who have been stripped to humiliate or degrade them, the asylum seekers of Manus and Nauru, the women who dare to speak of rape and abuse, and for resolve to stand in solidarity, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is nailed to the cross. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The people stayed there watching him. The leaders jeered at him and the soldiers mocked him. Some women, his friends from Galilee, looked on at a distance. We look on from a distance, a distance of time and space and culture, the distance of a Good Friday in Australia on the land of the Gadigal people. And for us it hurts to watch Jesus dying, even at a distance. It hurts to know the pain we cause one another. It hurts to know that in this we are being transformed. For times when we feel our hands are tied and the way of justice isn't straightforward, for the times we don't know if our actions will hinder or help, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus dies on the cross. It was 12 o'clock when the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the whole country until 3 o'clock and the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Abba God, in your hands I place my spirit. He said this and died. In your hands he placed himself. All that he was, all that he had ever been, all his life, all his loving, in your hands, O oh God, he placed himself, returning to the Creator, to the source of life and love. For the depth of your love for us and for all the earth, for our friends who have died, for the ones whose lives have shown us the way, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is taken down from the cross. And when evening came, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph took down the body and wrapped it in a linen sheet. Pieta. Jesus is dead and lies in the arms of his mother. Death is hard and final. 
And yet whatever happens on this earth, children never die to their parents. In the memory of those who loved them, loved ones remain. And for us and for all God's people, our hope is safe in God. From swaddling bands to grave clothes, all the days of our living and dying, we are cradled and wrapped in love. For those who mourn this day, for those who mourn one whose death they do not understand, or one whose body is missing, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Joseph placed the body in the tomb which had been dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and saw where the body of Jesus was placed. The door is shut now and the world sighs and waits. And we wait in night's darkness, longing for the morning, longing for the light that will bring us to Easter morning. Will it ever come? For the last words, forgive, you will be with me, Behold, forsaken, thirst, finished, into your hands, and the assurance that they will not be the final words, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy the waiting, holy the grieving, Holy the shadows and gathering night. Holy the darkness. Holy the hours. Holy the hope turning toward light. We go on our way and Jesus goes ahead of us. We need not be afraid. God is love, and love is more powerful than fear or death or evil, and we are greatly loved. Go out into the world in the power of the Spirit of Christ to walk through darkness and uncertainty towards the life of Easter Day. Go in peace.